were established in uh, 1834 and then um, <coughs> re-established ourselves in 1963. And we have uh, uh, huge experiences in many fields of expertise in science and technology. And we have three faculties associated with them. Uh, humanities and social sciences, medical and uh, science, agriculture and engineering. And I have to say that the degree program which are offered here are under the faculty of uh, science, agriculture and engineering or what we call it SAGE. Uh, we have very close link with our region and this is our policy to get very close to the region that we operate. So when we are in Singapore, the region for us will be Singapore society and Singapore industries. Uh, just overview of the number of students. In total, we have about 20,000 students, more than 20,000 students, uh, divided between overseas and home students, and postgraduate and undergraduate, 14,000 undergraduate and 5,700 postgraduate. So for those of you after graduation interested to do postgraduate, uh, you will have a much wider range of opportunities to do master programs. And in our collaboration and in operation in Singapore, within a couple of years' time, maybe shorter, we'll be offering a lot of master programs in Singapore as well. So we can either do it part-time or we can do it as a CPD program. That's it. This is an overall view of what we are going to do, what we are planning to do in this region. Our investment in Singapore, our future in Singapore is not short term, it's a long term. We are going to be here 10, 20 years, if not 30 years, and to make sure that we develop links with Singapore society, with Singapore industries, and we provide the manpower that is required for the sustainability of the future of Singapore economy and the regional development. I was going to try and give um, a, an overview of uh, some of the key aspects of our food and uh, human nutrition um, degree program. Um, uh, some uh, perhaps basic aspects, um, food and human nutrition degree is perhaps a degree for those of us that are interested in food. Um, those of us that are interested in making sure that food is healthy and safe to eat. And for those of us that are particularly interested in perhaps advising people um, about um, uh, nutrition and uh, making sure people are consuming um, healthy diets. And perhaps also engaging with uh, other organizations, particularly um, and companies and the food industry to, to, um, to help them um, with their task in developing um, healthier and functional foods um, for the future. I guess um, some of the key themes um, that underpin um, the degree program are looking at some of the complicated links between diet and health, a wide range of different factors that influence um, people's food choices, um, what makes up a balanced diet, um, how our bodies um, interact with the foods that we consume, the fundamental principles of nutrition, um, other aspects of um, food um, that are important to understanding and making sure that the foods that we are consuming are safe. So um, a degree in food and human nutrition will give us the expertise, the underpinning knowledge and the skills to be able to address some of these um, um, questions and really um, looking very carefully at what we mean by professional standards in nutrition. Um, if we're going to be giving people nutritional advice and talking about nutrition, we're also thinking very carefully about professional standards and what it means to be um, a nutritionist um, perhaps. Um, again, just very briefly, just to mention this idea that um, even when we start to look at um, nutrition, nutrition is very um, complicated. We can look at nutrition from lots of different perspectives. We can look at nutrition from a molecular level, um, thinking about cellular interactions and nutritional biochemistry, nutrient gene interactions. Some of the research that influences the teaching is very much focused at things from a, a biomedical um, and cellular um, level. Uh, the opposite um, extreme, if we're talking about working with people, talking about community nutrition, public health nutrition, um, healthy eating, giving people dietary advice, understanding um, um, dietary habits, we're talking very much about um, public health nutrition. And again, that's another main theme of our teaching and research, and perhaps overlapping um, broader issues related to food quality and food health. If we're talking about developing food products, ensuring food quality, and ensuring food safety. So perhaps um, um, some um, crude um, subject um, areas underpin um, our teaching and our um, research um, activities. And I guess the final thing um, and to finish here that underpins what we're doing on our food and human nutrition and degree programs, apart from talking very specifically about food and nutrition as a subject, and we're also getting people um, to, to move from diploma, from being diploma students um, to um, degree students. We're going to be um, uh, having students that are graduating with honours degrees, uh, and there's something very subtle about um, uh, working at degree level. So our, throughout our two years of study, we will be encouraging people to develop a higher level of skills 
um, that's um, distinguishing the difference perhaps between studying at degree level um, and diploma level. So there's a whole range of um, academic skills, um, laboratory based and classroom based skills that are also very um, subject and focused related to aspects of food and human nutrition. But what you're really interested in is this thing, the SITNU Chemical Engineering Degree Program. It's a two-year direct honours degree. The degree parchment will say Newcastle University, nothing else. It will be delivered at Nian. The degree aims to enhance the knowledge that you've already gained at diploma level. And it's only diploma level holders who are in, uh, admitted to this degree program. No A-levels, yeah? But please note, this is not a three-year program compressed into two years. Okay? We assume that you will have an equivalent of a first-year degree program knowledge by the time you graduated with your diploma from your polytechnics. So what are the entry requirements? Normally, we will ask for a GPA of three. We will also consider GPA scores which are lower. The current cohort has GPA scores ranging from around 2.8 to GPA 4. Okay? We require a minimum level in English because some of the subjects will require you to do a lot of explanation and a lot of writing. Every year, each student takes 120 credits. 10 credits equate to 100 hours of study, 24 hours of lectures, 12 of tutorials, X, Y, Z of other work. The SIT NU Chemical Engineering Program is based on the programs in Newcastle. The curriculum is all, almost identical with a bit of tailoring to suit the Singapore context. As you can see, for our Bachelor of Engineering uh, with honours in Naval Architecture, Marine Engineering and Offshore Engineering. So, these degrees are accredited honours programmes. They are accredited for professional recognition by the Royal Institution of Naval Architects and the Institute of Marine Engineering, Science and Technology. Uh, and they've been delivered here in Singapore now for um, we're coming into our, our fourth, fourth year of delivering um, programs over here. What is marine technology? What is this naval architecture, offshore engineering and marine engineering all about? Well, we've been asked over the years to do certain challenges. We've been asked to go faster, so we've built ships that can go fast. We've been asked to build, go bigger, go larger, and so Marine technology has provided ships and structures, some of the largest freestanding structures in the world. The program, common with all of Newcastle University's programs, in fact, follow two years. These are year one, your year one, and year two, are equivalent to the year two and year three over in the UK. Each year is divided into two semesters, and each year starts in line with the UK academic system. So you begin your first year in September. You have 12 teaching weeks, which, in which you do 60 credits. And then in January, you have some exams. Then your semester two, there's another 12 weeks followed by a period of exams. After your first year, you'll be doing an immersion program, an overseas immersion program with us at the Newcastle campus to experience Newcastle, the city itself, to experience our marine technology facilities uh, and to become completely immersed with the Newcastle experience, not just here in Singapore, but over there in the UK. So what are the entry qualifications? <clears throat> These programmes are specifically, particularly designed to take uh, people who have done the engineering diplomas that are marine-based from the, the major uh, Singapore polytechnics However, these programs can also take people with a broader engineering uh, diplomas, for example, mechanical engineering. Um, and if we do that, uh, we have a 12-week bridging program. The bridging program runs in the 12 weeks leading up to the start of the first year of the program. And what this allows us to do is to take people who are uh, have very competent in engineering, mechanical engineering, but just need the, the marine background to be put in before starting on, the, on the, the, the marine degrees over here in Singapore. My school offers a range of courses 
And the one in red is the one we're currently offering in, in Singapore, though we may expand that in the future. We offer a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical or a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Design and Manufacturing. And for students in the UK, many of them go on to do a fourth year um, and do an MEng, a Master of Engineering, and there's the range of subjects we do. But let me tell you a bit about the course. When you go from a diploma course to a degree course, it is a, like a change of gear. It's like going from third gear to fourth gear, or fourth gear to fifth gear in your car. It is much more intellectually demanding. We are not teaching you skills, we're teaching you how to think. I like to tell my students that my job is not to teach them, uh, it's not to teach them um, a method of doing things, it's to teach them how to think. I like to say I'm a brain engineer. I want them to go out of my class thinking differently from the way when they came in. If you learn in your course to design one product and you learn in the right way, you should be able to design other products because you know the, the, the techniques and the methodology. So we are teaching you a challenging course. It's more open-ended and flexible. So that it will be asking you to think for yourself. It will not be saying when you can complete this question, you have completed the course.